I'm Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr., and I have something very important to share with you. All life matters. In John's Gospel, chapter 9, verse 1 and down, our Lord was asked a question. There was a man born blind, and the question was, who did sin that this man would be born blind, his parents or him? Our Lord answered, neither, but this man's neither has sinned, this man nor his parent, but his condition was for the glory of God. I believe that all life matters and that people should be allowed to live. I have today three wonderful families, the Greens, the Listonbees, and the Wards, and they have wonderful stories of their children who the parents decided to give birth after the doctors encouraged them to have a, an abortion. And you will see that not all of the children that we will present to you are whole in the conventional sense. But when you hear the loving stories from these parents uh, concerning the contribution that their children have made to their lives, you will hear of parents who, even though uh, in, one, in, in some cases the children are wheelchair bound, but the parents are so glad that the child lives and, uh, and have various uh, conditions, and yet the parents are moved that the children were allowed to live and to be born. Kind of reminds me of the survivor of the household of Saul, a young man by the name of Mephibosheth. Oh yeah, Mephibosheth was an ex awesome young man, Saul's uh, grandson. His dad was Jonathan. But when he was born, he was dropped. And the Bible teaches that he was lame in his feet. He was crippled, but he was allowed to live. This Mephibosheth ended up being the sole survivor of the household of Saul, and he ended up living the rest of his days uh, seated, seated at King David's table. So now we're going to go into the interview of these three families. But before that, listen to this. The Reverend Jesse Jackson said this in 1977. Politicians argue for abortion largely because they do not want to spend the necessary money to feed, clothe, and educate more people. Here, arguments for inconvenience and economic savings take precedence over arguments for human value and human life. Psychiatrists, social workers, and doctors often argue for abortions on the basis of that the child will grow up mentally and emotionally scarred. But who of, of us is complete? If incompleteness were the criterion for taking life, we would be all dead. If you can justify abortion on the basis of emotional incompleteness, then your logic could also lead to you killing for other forms of incompleteness, like blindness, crippleness, an old age. I'm here with Sister Carolyn Green and Nicole and Stefan Cotton. Carolyn is a super mom with two beautiful babies. And Carolyn, I want you to tell your story with your children. Uh, what happened? What, yes. t talk, to, talk to us about these wonderful, wonderful kids of yours. Yes, sir, and I'd like to say I'm honored to come here today to just tell my story to mothers out there who may be in the same situation that I'm in and have mm -hmm. to make a de decision as to what to do, and as we know, it's only one decision Amen. to make. Amen. Um, Nicole is now 30. When she was born, her doctors wow. said to me that um, she would never, she probably grow old to be like six years old. Okay. They wanted me to put her in a home because they said she would be a vegetable. Mm -hmm. Nicole has graduated from high school. Hallelujah. She's been in my home her, her entire life for me to take care of. And I've always testified to people. Mm. I felt like God had chosen me to take care of his two special angels. Glory to God. Even after she was born mm. and I became pregnant with my son, Stefan, who's here. Uh-huh. The doctors knew of the situation with Nicole and they sent me to Duke for high risk and they wanted to have the amniotesis done to see if he had cerebral palsy mm -hmm. and you know, and I spoke with them and I was like, okay, why are we doing these tests? Mm -hmm. I said, can it change anything? And they was like, well, no, but it would give you options. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what options are you speaking of? Mm -hmm. Well, whether to abort or to keep your child. And I told them it was no option. I didn't do the no amniotesis. Option synthesis because it didn't matter to me to whether they were born he was born with cerebral palsy or not mm -hmm. I was going to keep 
him. He also graduated from high school. He's been a jewel <laughs> to take care of. They're just full of laughter, kept the home going. Nikki could talk and CJ used to roll around just like any other child mm -hmm. as a boy, mm -hmm. tearing down walls with his wheelchair, mm -hmm. sometimes lock it. <laughs> <laughs> um, watching movies, telling them to be quiet because we watching movies. It has just been a joy to me and I'm so thankful to, God. to have them in my life. I wouldn't take nothing for my journey. God mm -hmm. has been good to me. Even people seeing me with them have seen the joy and it's, you, I mean, I've had many testimonies of people coming to me, like, for instance, in a doctor's office. Mm -hmm. CJ mm -hmm. and I was there that day and just sitting there waiting for the doctor. A housekeeper came in. She came in one time, got trashed, and I noticed she came back. She came like three times. Okay. Then she came back. She said, ma'am, I'm so sorry. She said, I hope you think, you know, don't think I'm being funny or anything. She said, but it's something about this room. Glory she to God. said, I know I, I don't go to church like I should. She said, I've been thinking about going back to church and I'm thinking, you know, where is she going with this? And mm -hmm. she was said, every time I pass this room, I can just feel the love of God Hallelujah. in this room. Hallelujah. And she said, I just want you to know your son, I don't know his name, she said, but he loves you so much and he can mm -hmm. feel the love that you've given him. Glory to God. That meant so much to me, even though I knew they knew, but just to know that God just sent someone to me to confirm. And others know this. Yes. Uh -huh. So that has been a blessing to me. I've had that happen to me so many times. I just feel like they've been angels to me in my life. I can't imagine aborting them or getting rid of them. Mm -hmm. um, they're just God's creation. I Hallelujah. love them and they have been a glory Hallelujah. to me and my family. They go with me to church. Yes. I take them with me them. to eat. I yep. take them with me to the mall. I mean, they're with me at every family event. It's just, I don't know what I would do without them. Mm. But now, ever I'm not with them, I'm missing them. If I go on trips, I'm thinking about who has them or they're taking care of them like I should be taking care mm. of them. But I just thank God for bringing them into my life and I love them dearly. And I, I just love what you're doing. I love the cause yes, because yes. life is life. Life is life. That's Amen. just period. And it's all precious. Yes, it is. Could you imagine life without them? No, I couldn't. Do you regret having given birth and bringing them into the world and, and with the, the challenges that, have you, that you've had to face? No, I have not. It's really made me who I am today. Wow. It really wow. has. You know, I, I always said the joy of the Lord is my strength. He's mm -hmm. kept me with joy to give me mm -hmm. strength. I mean, even lifting them. I've had my brothers sometimes lift CJ on, and they was mm -hmm. like, how in the world do you lift them? But God has just given me strength. I wow. just pick them up like it's nothing, but he <laughs> equipped me with what I needed for them. So. To God be the glory. Yes, God to is God good. God be the glory. Yes. So you would argue that they, Stefan and Nicole, had a right to be born. Yes, of course. And that no doctor, no nurse, no political group or anyone else yes. uh, uh, has the right or, 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 or anything else to suggest that they not live. True. And be here. Yes. I'm grateful that when the doctors were taking tests, when Stefan was coming, yes. that you, you said right off the bat, will oh, the test God. change anything? Yes. Go ahead and talk, lady. <laughs> hey, and I guess she's saying you guys mm -hmm. are talking about it. Yeah. No, we're mm -hmm. not here. So since the, you, your position mm -hmm. was the, the test won't change anything, right. so there's no point in going through this battery of tests yes. because you're going to give birth to your children. Regardless. Yes. Your child. Yes. To God be the glory. Now, how old is he? He's 27. He's 27 yes, and sir. she's 30. Yes. And you don't appear to be much older than 27 <laughs> or 30 yourself. Thank you. Appreciate it. The Lord it. has preserved you. Yes, he has. I'm so excited. I want to thank you. Thank you. For taking the time to do this, to share this story with those who will see this, because you make the point that all life is sacred. That's right. Yes, sir. It's from the God of the Bible. Most certainly the Lord gave us these gifts. Yes. And most certainly God has given the world the gift of you. Thank you. Thank you so Appreciate much. Appreciate it. Thank God you. God bless you. God bless you. What a powerful testimony. I am here with another set of life warriors, Sonia and Bruce Ward. The Wards with their son, I call them the Mighty Jordan. A fantastic family with a fantastic 23-year-old son who is a blessing indeed. And by the way, uh, mom, uh, Sister Ward, I thought to call her Mama Ward, <laughs> Sister Ward is a blessing. She's a miracle in and of herself. What happened with you, uh, Sister Sonia? 
seven years ago, I was diagnosed with a medical condition called CQL. Mm -hmm. And that is a rare heart condition that doesn't have a cure. And God put his hand in it and gave me a brand new heart. Healed me 100% for this time. Now, in getting a brand new heart, did you get a heart transplant? No, sir, I did not. We were discussing those issues. God stepped right in. Um, and the doctor's exact words were, it is as though someone came in and gave you a brand new heart. It was deteriorating. It went from deteriorating to nice, red, and fleshy. Wow. So you mean to say, just for the audience, you never had a heart transplant physically. Never. But your doctors at the hospital yes, sir. where you were being treated and okay. prepped said that it was as though mm -hmm. someone came in and, and with the precision yes, of a sir. surgeon Perfect. replaced the old heart with a new heart. Brand new heart. Well, th that, 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 that's the God of the Bible. Yes, it is. What a mighty God he is. Yes, he so is. we're here today talking about th this young man, Jordan, and the contribution that he is making, has made, and how the wards are so glad that Jordan is in their lives. I want to uh, hear from the wards, and we're going to hear from Jordan. Jordan, how you doing, man? I'm good. Man, listen, I'm glad you came today. I appreciate you working with us. And right before we went on camera, you told the people to praise the Lord. Would you tell them again? Praise the Lord, everybody. Uh, praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Right. Everybody who's watching, you ought to praise the Lord. Amen. Hey, t talk to us, wards, about uh, your journey with this, this tremendous young man. Yes, sir. Um, it started out with Jordan um, being born premature. Mm -hmm. My mother had a heart attack. We went to pick her up from the hospital, and I went into premature labor at mm -hmm. five months. Mm -hmm. And statistically, children don't live in five months. So Jordan was born weighing one pound and 14 ounces. For wow. the first 34 days, the doctors pretty much told us every day that Jordan would not live. His life expectancy would be three to four months. Mm -hmm. Um, me and my husband being saved, we asked the doctors if they could just hold their reports because we chose to believe the report of the Lord. Hallelujah. And here we are 23 years later with a wonderful 23-year-old, very <laughs> smart, graduated top of his class with a 4.2. What? Um, graduated from Raleigh Christian Academy, and he loves the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, he's been a tremendous blessing to our family. Um, people, when they see us, they often see the chair, but when you get to know someone, you begin to know the person. Yes. Jordan has brought our family together. Mm -hmm. Statistics show that when you have a child with special needs, it will either separate the marriage or bring it together. And I'm Amen. here to say it has brought me and my husband closer than ever. Praise the Lord. He's the glue. He's the foundation. Um, by him being born early, he has started off many wonderful things. Glory. Every Glory. year in our family, um, around Christmas, we have about 40 people at our house because they knew when he was born, he was in the hospital. So they knew I wasn't going to leave him. So my husband's family came to our house. They've been come to our house to celebrate Christmas and Thanksgiving for 23 years. <laughs> <laughs> and it's okay. It's love. Amen. That's Amen. what he looks forward to. Amen. Now, right before we came in, Jordan, uh, you you did a you did a you you let me see your muscle. So do that again, just for the camera's sake. See, that's what I'm saying. See, it, look. The, the upper room, we have men here, and, and, and all of our men are a man's man. So right. thank God right. for Jordan mm -hmm. giving us that flex. Brother Ward, mm -hmm. help us out here. Uh, as the dad of this tremendous young man, as the, 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 the head of this family, just share with us uh, your, 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 your experience and how you feel and the contribution your son has made and, and, and with your wife and everything. But like she said, he's a joy, and we wouldn't trade him for nothing in this world. And it's ironic. God knows everything. Mm -hmm. How it all kind of came to folk that I am so familiar with. I had an uncle that got paralyzed at 16. Oh my. So God prepared me because I really kept him. Mm -hmm. Even when the boys were going out, I was with him. Wow. So he was preparing me not knowing years down the road I would have a son that has his characteristics, has his ways, and the way that I had to take care of him, I basically have to take care of Jordan too. Praise the Lord. And so it just equipped me, and it equipped my wife that I was familiar, and it helped her as we had to deal with other things, as we adapted um, to life. But he has been a joy. He's a crusader for Christ. Yes, he is. Uh, yes. If you don't see him with his Bible, then he's not feeling it. Hallelujah. But when he has his Bible, he is out 
spreading the word. Yes. He's recruited for the upper room. Glory to God. Um, Thank you, you will sir. be proud Thank of Thank you, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. I appreciate that. But he has Amen. been a joy, and he has been a joy in my life because when I feel down, I just look at him and I tell God, Thank you. Hallelujah. Well, here's the question as we get ready to, 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 uh, to, to close out this segment. Are you, are you glad that you gave birth? Or are you glad that he's here? I am. Praise 100%. the Lord. Yes. We'll Praise change the Lord. anything. He's, he's a blessing. He is. Yes, he is. And he is. he's a contributor. And the life that's flowing in his body mm -hmm. is as precious as the life that's mm -hmm. in my body, in yes. yours, mm -hmm. in his dad's, yes. or anyone else's for that matter. It is. Thank you so much for sharing your story. Thank God for the wards. And Jordan, thank God for you, man. Thank you. God bless. Thank you. Yes, I'm here with another set of what I call warrior parents and this warrior family, the Liston Bees. Tanya Liston B, their daughter, Tyra Liston B, and uh, the father, her husband, uh, Tyrell Liston B. And they have also a testimony because when Tanya was carrying Tyra, the doctors also suggested to her that she not give birth to this fine young lady and the, the, they decided not to listen and to give birth to this beautiful daughter of theirs. And they have a story to share about what the Lord has done and that their decision to give life to, if you will, let their baby live. Thank, thank you all for joining us today. Yes, so listen, okay. what, what happened, t tell us, share with us what the doctors said about uh, this beautiful young lady when you were carrying her. Well, during the first trimester of my pregnancy, I went to the doctor to have some tests done, which were routine tests for pregnant women. Um, the outcome of those tests, um, a couple of them were disturbing. One, um, they diagnosed her as being positive with Down syndrome. Okay. Um, and then one of the other tests, which was a blood test that was done, um, saw that she was having some type of issue um, with the organs, the blood flow um, was not actually flowing to the fetus, mm -hmm. which is, was causing um, issues with the growth of her organs. Mm -hmm. And so, of course, as a parent, um, a mother, the news was very disturbing to receive, mm -hmm. but I thank God for a supportive husband, um, Bishop, you and First Lady, my family and friends were very supportive and we immediately prayed mm -hmm. about the situation. And we believe God to work a miracle on um, Tyra's behalf. And in addition, um, they referred us to a counselor at the UNC Children's Hospital. Okay. Um, during this time, we were supposed to receive information on how to care for a child that had health issues, um, how to care for a child with Down syndrome. During this visit, we, were, we weren't surprised to hear um, them put so much emphasis on um, the burden uh, that a Down Burden. syndrome child Burden. could be to yeah. a family. Okay. Um, it w we were kind of, you know, expecting some of that, but the emphasis they put on it talked about the financial burden mm -hmm. um, that a Down syndrome child could, could bring to a family. They talked about how much time it would consume to care for a child. Mm -hmm. um, and all of that led into um, their real presentation, wow. which was the presentation of them offering us um, the option of a voluntary abortion. I see, I see. Yes, sir. You're talking about leading the witness. Yes. In the courtroom, they, that would be leading the Absolutely. witness. Absolutely. Sowing a seed in your mind to abort the baby. Absolutely. Which their, their conversation, their, their logical conclusion is she shouldn't be allowed to live. Absolutely. Okay, what happened? And so my husband and I were totally shocked. Mm. You know, as believers, the thought of um, aborting our baby was never an option mm -hmm. for us. Um, we were shocked, and I was more shocked as a mother that that would even be an option right. that human beings would present to another human being. Mm -hmm. um, that instead of caring for your child, right. despite the condition right. that they right. had, right. that you would choose right. to just get rid of the child. Right. And, and in our case, you know, we believe God. We had mm -hmm. already prayed about it. Mm -hmm. We had already, you know, asked God to perform a miracle mm -hmm. on behalf of Tyra. Mm -hmm. And for us, it would have been taking that option of God choosing to 
heal her away mm -hmm. by choosing to take her life mm -hmm. away. So, mm -hmm. of course, we didn't even have to discuss it. You know, the doctors, they, they give you, you know, once they present something like that, they gave us the, the, um, the option of being able to discuss it right. uh, while they walked out of the room. Well, we told them, sir, you don't have to walk out of the room. Wow. Without looking at my husband, without my husband looking at me, our decision was made. We're wow. going to keep our baby. So you did like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They told the king, said, we're not careful to answer Absolutely. you concerning this matter. Yes. Our God, whom we serve, will deliver us from this fiery furnace. But if he doesn't, if he we does. still won't bow. Absolutely. So, so you were, were was, was your position as a family, and I want you to chime in, sir, yes, sir. was your position, we're going to trust God to heal our daughter, but even if he doesn't, we're going to give birth to our child. Yes, that was definitely that was definitely the case. Um, it was a, to me, it was a no-brainer. Uh, you know, uh, being a first-time father, uh, I was actually awestruck at the, mm. the option that they presented. I was, it kind of gave the doctor a face like, you know, you want me to kill my daughter, and uh, so my I was determined from there on out, no matter what however the lord said it was going to be his will mm. i was going to be there for my wife my mm -hmm. child spiritually mentally and, and physically whatever god's will would be yes. you would be there for your wife and for your daughter that's correct if their diagnosis or whatever came to fruition you'd be there yes and if it didn't and god turned it around you'd be there, I'd be there. but either way you would be there for them which means she would be here. Correct. She would be alive, allowed to live. Correct. Uh, you said something interesting. You were kind of taken aback at how they, the, the offer, how much emphasis was placed on termination, aborting the child. Right. And hindsight, looking back at it now uh, and reading some statistics here of late mm. of how uh, doctors in Iceland, uh, Iceland, Denmark, UK and France, 100% if you diagnose prenatally, they abort the child. Wow. So it's no longer a choice. Lord Jesus. So they're taking the choice away from me and just, yep. look, and just looking at that, uh, one wonders if it becomes a business. Mm. Well, you is. know, you, you don't want to ever say that a doctor could be morally corrupt, but we, we saw what Gosnell did. Yes. And yes. so um, it, it comes to the point of, you know, is the diagnosis, is this a business, mm. or do you actually care about the life in the womb? Amen. Amen. Yeah. Well, listen, with our time remaining, Tyra, how are you? How has she fared? Um, what kind of uh, grades does she make? Uh, how, how is she doing? She's actually doing wonderful. Um, she's an A honor roll student. Mm. Um, this is her first year in middle school, and we were blessed to have an all A honor roll student all the way through elementary. I never did and, that. <laughs> I did. And she's in middle school now and she's um, excelling just as well. She's making all A's. So we're really proud of her. She has a musically gifted talent um, mm -hmm. that has been demonstrated through um, just being in middle school. She was the only sixth grader who was asked to be a part of the marching band, which is a high school band because mm. of her um, musical talents. Wow. So she's doing very well. Wow. Well, Tara, do you have anything to add to this conversation today? Um, no, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I kid with her all the time. I ask her, how does it feel? Because given her grades and uh, how she has fared, uh, she's smarter than most people. So I ask her all the time, how does it feel to be in a room knowing you're the smartest person in the room? And, and she blushes and doesn't give me a good answer. But uh, I am so proud of this family as well. And I thank God for you and for your willingness to trust the Lord yes. and trust that the outcome, whatever the outcome would have been, it would have been the right outcome. Yes. Because God knows. And in, and in this case, he healed her body the doctor's predi predictions did not come true, and she is doing great, and we're happy for this wonderful Absolutely. family. Thank you, Listed Bees, for coming and sharing and sharing this story for our audience. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Yes, sir. Um, just in, living in a time where um, we're fighting now, 
um, for children to not only live, but you know, where the doctors and, and everyone is fighting for children to be aborted at mm -hmm. the end of term. I am actually very appreciative to my doctor um, because when I was at the final stages of my pregnancy, um, I was diagnosed with a really bad infection, mm -hmm. um, which I had in my body. Mm -hmm. And so the treatment that was needed for this infection was too strong for Tyra. Mm -hmm. And so instead of the doctor um, making me choose mm -hmm. between whether I take the treatment and harm my baby, he made the decision to actually allow me to have her early. Praise God. So instead of me having Tyra you, at the time where I was supposed to have her, he took the baby early so that I could receive the treatment mm. and so that she would be able to live as well. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you for sharing that. And, and thank you, uh, doctor, for what you did. And I pray that more doctors uh, would operate the same way. And I'm sure that you do. But we are trying here to save lives because we believe that all life matters. God bless.